We're here to uh, discuss or get a nice presentation on the extending the LoRaWAN coverage using the new relay feature, which has been introduced by the Alliance, which is really should be a fascinating uh, conversation. So we have both Actility and Simtech present here to present. So we have uh, Thor, Thor Santander, if you want to come on up, as well as Davide Orifiyama from Simtech. So thank you guys, and uh, with that, uh, take it away. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. So I stay there. At least right. So. If you are like Laura, Laura one addicted like, uh, like myself, I think you have seen many of those slides. So I'm David Rifiamma, I'm working on, uh, on Sem in Semtech since like uh, 10 years now. I'm very much at the origin of the Laura one technology with Olivier and the other guys, other folks. I was more the guy behind the scene, if I may say that. Uh, so I'm proud today to present you those activities that we are doing with, uh, with, the, with the Alliance and others about the, how we're gonna extend actually the uh, the LoRaWAN coverage, right? So we know that LoRaWAN is, uh, you know, has this kind of uh, kind of curve there about, you know, the cost of uh, connectivity against actually what is the coverage. And we know that uh, sometimes people want to attend the 100% coverage based on what uh, they, they got, right? In particular, we've seen a lot of demand from metering companies to, to go and achieve this kind of asymptomatic like 100%. And in some case, you cannot go there and install a gateway. So this is why the idea and the needs for a relay, right? So this is what we've done. So it was a long discussion and conversation with, conversation with the technical committees, marketing committees about the need of that. And now, since last September, we came with this kind of uh, specification, actually, on which we define how this was to, to look like. So what we're going to actually um, present later on is this kind of extension of the network with something that is based on a relay that is battery powered actually so it's a kind of single hop connectivity through a LoRa one gateway with uh, a limited number of devices that are within uh, uh, a relay uh, range but with packets that are LoRa one compatible okay so it means that a packet that uh, is passing through a relay can also join directly a gateway, actually, with uh, not that much intelligence needed. So of course, we're gonna also uh, see that uh, the security mechanisms are the same as the LoRaWAN, uh, let's say, basic LoRaWAN, or legacy, if I may say that. And, um, and let's say also, it appears like a, a standard device. So the idea will be also to go and, and through the LoRa Alliance, certify those, those devices to be uh, standard as well. So the, the, the basic example about the application is basically that, right? So I cannot reach the coverage of a, of a specific end device, so I go and apply a specific relay on a, on a, on a kind of critical position, battery operated, to go and catch the signal out, uh, out uh, from, uh, from that specific space. And you can imagine plenty of use cases. Here are very basic example. We can imagine many others. We've seen like forest coverage, you have seen behind and hill kind of coverage. Of course, if you need uh, you know, to go behind an obstacle, this is the right technology, we believe. And um, how is working now? So we enter a bit into the technicalities now, okay? The idea is to have uh, a device that is battery operated, okay? So what does it mean? It means that you have uh, to be basically off almost all the time, right? So with this kind of channel activity detection that is basically a very short listening window. You can stay on for some uh, milliseconds every second and still be, be able to receive a, a, a signal actually, a LoRa signal. And of course you can do that on a single frequency or to be more robust on multiple frequencies. So by default we have this kind of CAD activities or CAD or channel activity detection on a single channel, but we can also do on two channels, okay? For that macro, for diversity and frequency diversity in, in, per, in particular. Um, we can see also that periodicity can be adapted to your use case. So imagine that you have uh, uh, less constraint on the battery, you can have cut periodicity that is shorter, or in case uh, you are very limited in terms of battery, you can extend your, uh, your uh, CAD listening window to something up to one second, okay? 
And we see later also how this will impact also the, the battery constraint. Again, a bit more in deep. How we wake up a relay, how we, we, we are sure that the relay that is there, listening periodically, is uh, waking up when uh, is just when it's needed. So we, after a lot of discussion, going through different IPs that exist on the market, of course, of about single hoping, battery power device, et cetera, we thought that the best way it was to introduce before a typical LoRaWAN uplink, this one is a standard LoRaWAN uplink, class A, class B, for example. Uh, we introduced this WAR, what, what, what is WAR, is wake on radio uh, frame, that is basically a pretty long frame that is able to go and be catched by this kind, kind of uh, cut periodicity that we've seen before, and wake up the relay to receive the rest of the signal, actually. We also see here in blue uh, an additional uh, listening window on which actually an acknowledgement can be sent from the relay to the device to confirm that yes, you can go and send the rest of the packet. So it can also be optimized for the end device in terms of uh, power consumption because in case this hack is not received, you just stop speaking and you just go back to uh, look for another relay or change your connectivity mode, okay? Another addition, actually, is the blue RX R windows or RX3 windows, okay, that, that is there. So what is that? It's basically an opportunity of downlink that still exists in the protocol so that uh, the, the link between uh, the end device and the network server is bidirectional. So we keep the same advantage as the typical LoRa one uh, needs, like class A, for example. Um, this is mainly that uh, we can, you can also imagine that uh, the, one of the main requests was to have a join through a relay because maybe a device ne will never see a gateway in its entire life. So also a join mechanism has to go and pass through a relay. So this is what uh, we did. And this mechanism, of course, uh, involve uh, join as well. So how this, so let's go a bit farther in deep into the, into, um, the mechanism, right? So we see here that we have uh, this, uh, this end device wake on radio, then a receive to get the acknowledgement, then the uplink. So what happens now with, uh, with that uh, data? The relay will basically en encapsulate this data within a, another LoRaWAN uplink that will contain basically the, the uplink information of the originator of the information and some metadata, right? For what? Actually, to be sure that the LNS is aware about the link budget between the relay and the end device. So the, the, the LNS provider or the operator can handle that, can handle also uh, where the relay are positioned, and then they can also handle power and data rates to adapt this link budget. Then, of course, this uh, encapsulation is made. There is an uplink generated from the relay to the gateway and then the network server that will then have an opportunity to downlink data and metadata, and then uh, eventually a downlink can be also issued from, uh, from the relay to the, uh, to, the, to the end device, okay? So the flow is pretty straightforward, okay? It's pretty simple, actually, even if it may, may seems complex. Uh, you will see demo later. Tior will, uh, will explain about that. Um, we introduced this kind of F port 226, that is basically a port on which every kind of uh, encapsulated data has to pass through, okay? And metadata, as, as we know, uh, will be part of that. So there is a standard kind of encapsulation that has been defined within, within that spec. So let's go to the security, okay? We wanted to keep the same security mechanism or same security level as the typical LoRaWAN connection. So what we have done is the introduction of something that we call uh, uh, relay keys, okay? Or in particular, root war keys, okay? The one that you are, are there, okay? The, those are derived from the same network session keys that we all already pretty no, pretty, we know pretty well. And then from that, we derive basically two keys, one for the war integrity check and one for the war encryption. Okay, because of course the war is, uh, you can be considered as a, as a frame per se. 
So it's an, as an independent frame on which you can also put a bit of information, but you want this link to be secure. And this is why actually there is this mechanism of uh, key sharing between the LNS, the relay, and the end device. On, and those keys are basically known by the, by the, the three actually entities that are, uh, that are there. Of course, this opened a lot, some complexity on the certification committees. We discussed yesterday with some of you. Some of you. Uh, now we introduce an, a new element, but at least we can achieve actually this, uh, this sec same security mechanism, or at least the same, the same level of that. And that is my last one, then I will pass to Tior. Uh, battery, okay, so here is a kind of uh, simulation about uh, how the battery is impacted or get impacted by the, the relay mode. So this is the battery of the relay itself. So we see that uh, here, we, we made a specific simulation that is basically uh, a CAD every one second, 10 end devices connected to this relay, sending 50 bytes per hour each. You see that basically um, with a, a single channel uh, CAD detection always on and this kind of activity, on this kind of battery that is basically a, uh, something like a 17 ampere hour uh, battery, so something that you can see around in the market, you can get 10 years, okay? And then, of course, if you do multi-frequency CAD uh, activities, then you go to something a little lower, for example, it's like 7.5 years. And you see there that actually the majority of the activity, this is the message actually, is still the CAD detection. So you can imagine, because I've got multiple questions, why not something that is using the LoRaWAN standard as is today? This is the reason actually. If we want to do a battery operated uh, network extender, you cannot leave it always in continuous reception mode. You have to duty cycle this reception. You have to do something a, a bit more clever or smart. And still is what dominates this power, okay? Imagine th those numbers multiplied by 100, like uh, would be a continuous reception um, listener. That would be huge. So this is why actually the war has been introduced and this is why also th this protocol wa was needed, okay? So this is mainly the, the key point I wanted to share with you. And then I leave uh, the floor to Tior. It's your. So, on my side, I'm going to talk about uh, how we implemented this. Uh, so, with Semtech Health, and so the implementation of this new standard on the Mac layer uh, was done on, at two level uh, on the network server and on the device. So, on the network server, uh, we kept everything that you have on a regular uh, LoRaWAN device. So, everything from being able to use. Uh, Radio macro diversity uh, with the gateways, uh, ADR mechanisms, uh, being able to configure everything on the radio, uh, the smart selections of the gateways that are going to be used by, the, by each relay, um, how to, uh, the optimal selection of the delays, uh, receive windows to be used, and also the me uh, security mechanism that we have around uh, replay attacks, detection, and mitigation. On the end device side, um, so the end device are, are working uh, in a hybrid mode, as uh, Davide was explaining. So they can, at the same time, be served directly by the network server or go through a relay. And there's an automatic uh, detection selection of the best serving relay for the device that is implemented. Uh, you can also have already uh, both ABP and OTA devices using uh, relays. And of course, uh, both uh, stationary and mobile devices can be used. And so we do have a demo available uh, for the relay, so I invite you all to come at our booth, uh, at the activity booth on the, on the marketplace. And so here I'm trying to explain a bit what we did and what we have available. So we do have an end device using an, an uh, so actually it's an S61262 because in the, we're in the US. Uh, we have the relay, our gateway, and the network server. Uh, what we did is we blocked the connection uh, of the end device by configuration. So by configuration, the end device cannot directly be served by the network server. And this was just to be able to show uh, what the relay would do. Um, we, the implementation already supports both US 915 and US 68. So if you come here on the, at our booth, you will see the US 915 version of it. 
uh, both the relay and the end device are in OTA modes, and so the end device joins through the, the relay. On our packet sniffer, so wireless logger if you know it, uh, you are able to see both the encapsulated message and the decapsulated message from the device. And here to try to walk through what you can see and what, what is happening, what Davide was, was explaining. So at the bottom you see, uh, so every upward green arrows are uplinks and every downward purple arrows are downlinks. So the first two is the relay joining the network. So, so far it's, it's perfectly standard LoRaWAN device. Then you have the network server who is configuring the uh, relay. And then you have the end device uh, that is sending its join request. And you can see, so what you see here is uh, seen as it is happening chronologically. So even though the, the join request is first uh, received by the relay, here you see the join request as sent by the end device. So it is sent, it's a regular LoRaWAN uh, join request. And what you see just above is the encapsulated messages corresponding to uh, that join request. So you see what uh, Davide was explaining on the port 226. And so this is the encapsulated join request received uh, by the relay and the corresponding uh, join accept. And then you have the NNS that is updating the relays uh, on, the, on, the, on the device. And finally, at the end, uh, you have the relay sending the join accept to the end device. And we find again the 18 second of that new RxR window uh, between the uplink from the end device and the downlink sent to the end device. And if we go a bit deeper on that, so if you open what you have in the packets, so we can see, for example, on a regular uplink, so the end device is sending an uplink to the, to the network. So we have the decapsulated version here. Just above the packet sniffer shows the uh, encapsulated version of that packet sent to the port 226. We can see that there's a 50 millisecond delay between, between those two. So again, first it's chronological. So first the uplink was sent by the end device. And then you have the relay that is sending that packet to the network server. Again, you can see the port 236 there. And you can see the LNS answering to the uh, relay on its, its own RX1 window. And then you have the relay that forwards the darling act to the device. And you find again that, oops, 18 second window between uh, the original uplink at 27 here and the uh, down link at 45 seconds there. And so I invite you all to come to our booth uh, in the marketplace to have a live demo of this. Uh, tomorrow we're going to do at 2 p.m. Uh, we're going to put that on, on a bigger screen. So if you want to go there, uh, please come and join us. Thank you.